Hey, I'm Elliot from Steady State. Come on in out of the rain. We'll take a quick tour of the roastery. <laughs> that kind of works, not really. This is our lab. We have a lot of things here to brew and taste and experiment with coffee, as well as some things to roast coffee and try it. One of the first main things that we do a lot is sample roasting, whether it be new offers from importers or farmers or anyone that's asking us to buy some coffee. We sample roast the green coffees and we have a few things here to do that. We have a little Ikawa, a little 50 gram electronic roaster. And we have this little Mill City 500 gram roaster over here as well as two, well, one double barrel sample roaster. All of those are used for roasting green and making assessments on buying it or profiling new coffees that come in. It's nice to have them all here in a more controlled environment rather than out in the roastery. We have some other things behind you. So we have a lot of grinders because everyone knows that's in the coffee. Grinders are probably one of the biggest things that can influence the taste of coffee. So we have a lot of different grinders that we experiment with, try different things. A Malconic EK2, EK43s, compact PK100, a GH2, for more for brewing stuff, a little Peak. We have a decent espresso machine, a little Barazza Vario grinder over there. The decent's awesome. We can make all kinds of different pressure profiles with it, pre-infusions. You can make pour overs with it. I'm tried and true, this is uh, the first grinder, industrial grinder, I guess you could say that I ever bought. I purchased it with our first two kilo roaster about eight years ago. Swapped the burrs out numerous times and just kept it running and it's tried and true. It's the grinder we use always for cupping. They're great. We have a double batch brewer here just for making batch brews, dialing in different recipes, you know, testing different spray heads, seeing how different coffees taste with different recipes. And we also use it so we can make a lot of coffee so everyone can drink it while everyone's here roasting. A couple hot water kettles, different ways to heat hot water, it's nice. We have other people that come and roast here too in the collective, they can bring the water from their cafe and use that instead of using ours so that they know more what their coffee might taste like. And you always need a good old dishwasher. Can't go wrong with one of those. Um, and as well as a sink, you need a sink. And the cupping table, this is a cupping table. It's where we make all the evaluations with cupping. For those that don't know, cupping is basically a full immersion brewing method where you kind of make a little French press, if you would, into a little bowl or cup here and try the coffee. It's a quick, fast, easy, repeatable way to do that um, quickly, so. Oh, I guess we also have, we have a little collection of other roasters' coffees here, people that roast here, people that we like and we buy their coffee and we try it, see what they're doing, see what's new out there. So that was our lab where we do a lot of experimentation and quality control and looking for fun new coffees and everything. Let's go check out the roastery floor. A lot of action happening today. We'll start over here with our next smallest, next biggest roaster. We have a San Franciscan SF1. All roasters, one cool thing, all roasters in this production area are made in the USA, which is cool. A lot of them come from San Franciscan and also the Loring, which comes from California. So another thing too, all of the roasters in here have Cropster hooked up to them and the proper probes and software and everything installed to get good data and stuff while you're roasting. So this little guy can roast up to one pound at a time. We usually use it for more like 300, 400 gram batches and stuff. Maybe if you want to start like a profile on a new coffee or something and you didn't like the Mill City, you can use this. And then next we'll go over here right behind you. Careful of these guys roasting here too. This is a SF6, also from San Franciscan Roaster Company. It can roast up to six pounds. It is also hooked up to Cropster software. And right over here we have like one of several bagging stations. Bagging is a big congestion in collectives and when you're busy and there's a bunch of different people in here roasting. This is kind of a handbagging area that's nice for everyone to use. Then the next one we have, we can see Portal, uh, Portal Coffee roasting here is an SF25. It can do up to 25 pounds at a time. The big thing in the back is an afterburner which runs at about 1300 degrees and it incinerates all the smoke before it goes out into the atmosphere. You can also see that we've 
uh, plumbed in water suppression or fire suppression on all of the roasters that are 25 pounds and bigger, which is super important. So we actually have two SF25s, the black one and the red one. So let's go take a look at those. These are all, all these ones that we've looked at so far, the SF1, the SF6, and both SF25s are classic drum roasters um, where they have atmospheric burners underneath where the air and the gas mix underneath and the drum rotates and it combines to make about classic drum roasters have about i don't know 85 percent convective heat transfer from the hot air going over them and around 15 10 percent conductive heat transfer from the hot drum there's paddles inside that help move the coffee around and everything and a fan that pulls uh, hot air over the coffee so we can see here if you look on this screen the roasting software in action with mr vince here so we have our profile in the background and he is trying to stay onto the lighter profile as best as he can with the colors and everything. I have different temperature readouts of the bean temperature and the environmental temperature and everything. This is a roast profile here in the background, the lighter color. And then the like little blue and the yellow and the reds are our current roast. So we know if we're like all our, if all of our gas adjustments were within plus or minus 10 seconds and our end temperature is within you know, usually a degree or two, we don't really need to QC it. But if this was majorly off of our profile, we'd pull it aside and QC it the next day and add another roast to our day. And then the next roaster that we have is a Loring. It's a S35. We can do up to 77 pounds. Way different than all the classic drum roasters we've looked at so far. It's about 99% convective heat transfer. The flame or the energy or the heat is actually back in the little cylinder there. Um, and it's a completely closed system and the drum itself doesn't spin. There's just paddles that move the coffee around and it shoots the hot air over the coffee and pulls it back and recycles some of it out into the uh, world via the afterburner and recycles some of it back to use for heat. It's a little bit more energy efficient than classic drum roasters, but a way different roasting style on it. So uh, this here is a distoner. Maybe we'll get some action on it a little bit later, but you know, coffee's an agricultural product that's processed in a lot of times in third world countries where there's a lot of stones and rocks and things like that. And this helps remove those. This is also the bean cart. You can weigh, um, it has a built-in scale. You can weigh out your coffee. And instead of lifting 77 pounds over your head, which I know I can't do, it lifts it up into the hopper for you before you start roasting. Pretty cool little effect. We're about to end this roast as well. So maybe let's get a shot on the roast ending. Ah, roasted coffee. <laughs> uh, so after the coffee comes out, there's a separate fan and a perforated, basically, a uh, thing with a bunch of holes in it where it pulls cool air over the coffee and out to help cool the coffee within a matter of minutes because it comes out at over 400 degrees. Over here, we have a production bagging area. You put your roasted coffee in here, it sucks it to the top, it weighs out the set number, whatever you have programmed in, and you hit the little foot switch and it goes into the bag. We can see it in action over here, but again, we have a couple different bagging areas set up. Here we have two scales and some buckets. We put the scales on carts so that you don't have to lug them around. You can just roll them and then roll all of your green coffee weighed out to roast. It's helpful with everyone's coffee being stored over here. So. Over here, we have another weigh-in fill area happening with Mr. Miguel here. So the coffee is weighing out the specified amount the, for the bag. And then he's running it through the sealer to get the little heat seal on it. And then in here, we have green storage for all of the customers of the collective. So just basically green coffee on pallets. Can never have too much storage in a roastery. What else? Back in the corner, we have a food grade mixer. It's what we use for all of our blends. Whenever you have to blend two coffees, it's good. It does a really thorough job of mixing everything. Ah, look at it go. All right, so that's the roastery. Let's go check out where we store our coffee and the cold brew facility. And just right next door here, we keep all of our coffee. It's a little bit more well insulated and a little bit more con consistent temperature, as well as where we keep our little electric forklift and everything. But that's it. Let's go check out the cold brew.
Run? As you can see, we don't really deal with rain too well here in Southern California. So this is our cold brew facility. One of the most important things is a massive three-phase, 650 pound an hour grinder. Definitely need that for making larger batches of cold brew. Then right behind you, we have old Jennifer Lopez here, um, a little bright tank for doing larger volumes and runs of cold brew. It is also part of the collective, so anyone that also roasts in the collective can can their cold brew here as well. You can see the fun collection of cans that we have there. And we have our own canning machine. It's a nitrogen doser wild goose. We got it a couple years ago. We kind of know how to use it now, but it's going well. The next thing you need for making massive amounts of cold brew is a brew bomb. This thing's great. We went from steeping our cold brew for 48 hours to making 100 gallons in about six hours. Highly recommend it. We also have a food safe mixer here which we use for basically large blooms or pre-wetting all the coffee before we cold brew. Walk-in cooler and a walk-in freezer. The walk-in cooler just stores all of our cans and everything. And the walk-in freezer has something a little special in it. I'll show you guys. In the walk-in freezer, we started this a few years ago. We have officially started a vintage program. So you can see we have a few high-end lots of coffee here. Let's check it out. From some of our favorite coffees over the years that we will soon release, we have a couple lots that we've had for three years in a row, all the same lot, same, uh, same type of coffee and that we're gonna roast later on down the road and you can have like basically a tasting of the last four years of a lot of coffee and some of the higher end stuff that has happened over the years. So kind of a fun, exciting thing. It's all frozen green coffee, just so you guys know. And in the walk-in here, we just have some ginger that we juice for the cafe and some cold brew cans and a bunch of shelves for storing cold brew and everyone else's cold brew. That's it, it's just a walk-in refrigerator. Nothing really too fun. Thanks for stopping by for a quick tour. I'm pretty sure I forgot to show you some stuff and I'm pretty sure everyone will let us know in the comments how everything is and everything that we missed and what we're doing wrong. So thanks ahead of time. It's great to love you guys. Now get on out. I did a kick. <laughs>